is, I just found a graph of the storm for 2004, so it's probably been about 2003. And this was an interesting project here. This little square here is six feet deep, and uh, basically it's wrapped in a porous pa in a in a geotextile, and we took water from the parking garage to this little square. Let me ask, in New York City, a lot of places use ratios of impervious surface to footprint. Do they do they use them up there? What are the numbers they usually use? Like five to one, ten to one? Some, yeah, a lot of times what they'll do is like for sizing these before you get in the more engineering approach, they used to, they used to say, and they still say in our manual, somewhere about five to one from impervious area to footprint to ten to one. Yeah, less than ten to one. Less than ten to one. Like for an example, if you went over at that first site, the porous pavers, and you take the roof and the base, it's like a two to one ratio. So a very foot, big footprint for the impervious surface coming into it. This one is 140 to 1, I believe is the answer. And we did that on purpose. We wanted to advance time and really treat it roughly and nastily and see how it would perform. A um, couple things about the site. You know why we have this exactly here? Uh, here I, well, one is we went over there and dug down to hit rock about three or four feet deep. <laughs> over here, we didn't hit rock 10 feet below it. So just by moving it from there to there, the, di the difference in the subsurface conditions. And the other part is, I believe it is electrical wire, sanitary line, water line. We're actually in the middle of the square of the utilities that we could fit in. And I think we cut the telephone line to that building, but those, again, those are the dirty arts and science professors. So, it, so we didn't care about that. We were told that we were infringing on that tree and we would kill it, and it was very bad shape. And I think we now have one of the most happily watered trees in the universe uh, from this particular site. Uh, we've done a lot of studies on this site. It's kind of inactive now, waiting for uh, the treatment train to get a little better on instrumentation so we can do one-to-one -one comparisons. But one thing was we figured out very quickly in about a year or two year, uh, two two and a half years, the bottom of this seal. So now all infiltration comes out of the side. And again, gigantic surface area, little tiny spot with very little pretreatment. So it was really designed for something like this to happen. But it shows you the danger of sediment. Remember we talked about the 98-year-old infiltration site of water coming off a roof of very low sediments? And here's the opposite, the bottom seal. Now, last we looked, it was still infiltrating out of the sides. And only, by the way, it only takes about a quarter inch of rain for this to overflow. And that's just because it's such a big area and such a small footprint. But guess what? The Pennsylvania Manual says you only build these assuming the bottom infiltrates and don't count the sides. And it's the exact opposite. And we should have learned that from septic tile fields and septic fields. Same thing. The bottom seals, infiltration is out of the sides. So in some ways, you can say this was probably a success story, because even in this gigantic watershed, it's still infiltrating, if we had assumed just the sides were infiltrating. And of that size, that might have been 30 or 40 years of flow versus three years of flow by the ratios for what's coming in. Uh, this is, again, where we use, first use these as overflows. We have a little issue here we need to fix, but you can see the... The water, again, it bubbles up on the big storms, and it's like sheet flow. And it was actually kind of funny. We connected everything, and then we had a severe storm five minutes later that was unsuspecting. And my grad student at the time was getting very nervous because all this water is coming out, but it performed beautifully. Um, all this stuff is for uh, instrumentation, uh, or V-notch weirs at the time trying to measure flows. Uh, you don't really need big green pipes uh, on those sites. Um, what, what else we've learned from this site? We did studies of the runoff off the parking deck, and they took samples for a quarter inch of rain, a half inch of rain, an inch of rain, then two inches of rain, and we definitely see a first flush, uh, especially in suspended solids. Most of the suspended solids were, were, were within the first inch of the rainfall. Now, we did not see it as much in the total dissolved solids. Those seem to be spread out. We didn't see as much of a 
first flush on that for that particular paper. But if if you get most of your rain in small storms and you're attacking the small storms, you get a hydrologic first flush. So basically, we still feel that that first part of the storm is important when you're looking at water quality and temperature and all the other aspects. Um, any questions?